Hi, my name's Eric. Welcome back to my channel. Let's talk once again about Madonna. Today, I'm going to react to and analyze three more of her music videos that you requested, and those music videos are Vogue, Drowned World, or Substitute for Love, and Hung Up. Before I dive in, let me know in the comments down below what three Madonna music videos I should react to next. Check the description box for a link to a list of nonprofits you can donate to. Please subscribe to be here when I post new videos every week, and hit the bell icon to be notified when my videos go live. Without further ado, first up is Vogue. Ooh, oh, that's cool. <laughs> the iconic cone bra. Wow. I love the cutting on beat here. Wow, I love the black and white. I believe this is another David Fincher directed music video. He does such great work with Madonna and Madonna's dancing in this music video is super impressive. The video feels very elegant and cohesive, but still has a nice variety of set pieces. And of course, Madonna's signature cheeky sense of humor. In the lyrics to the song, Madonna talks about all these old Hollywood icons. So the aesthetic of the video matches that. It also makes sense because this song was featured on I'm Breathless, which was a soundtrack to Dick Tracy, which takes place in the 1930s. 30s, again, the same sort of golden age of Hollywood. I don't know if there are that many specific symbols going on in the video, but I think what's significant about it is the way that this old Hollywood aesthetic matches or mismatches with the casting and with the context of the song. The stars that Madonna names and that inspired this video were, for the most part, if not entirely, white and straight, whereas voguing comes from a world that is very not that. And the casting of the video reflects that. It's a diverse cast of dancers. I talked about this a bit in my reaction to I'm Breathless, but part of the significance of talking about these old Hollywood icons in the context of voguing is that a lot of the ballroom scene and drag culture and associated subcultures involved a lot of aspirational sort of imagination. If you've heard the expression realness, its meaning has been diluted and changed a bit in recent years, but in its original ballroom context, it referred to the capacity of members of marginalized communities to imagine themselves as being successful and being glamorous and being supported and lauded. It was the assertion that a queer or trans person of color was just as worthy of success and comfort and dignity as a white cishet person like Marilyn Monroe or Fred Astaire. So that's why it's such a natural decision for this video to be so overtly glamorous with these dancers wearing suits and gowns and looking just very elegant. They're in business suits and on movie sets and doing all of the things that people aspire to and showing that people in these communities can achieve those things because our image of success has traditionally been limited to a very uniform appearance. It's also worth noting that this song and video came out during the peak years of the AIDS crisis when the members of the same communities that originated voguing were the ones suffering and being stigmatized. So for one of the biggest pop stars in the world, if not the biggest pop star in the world at the time, to send out a message of inclusivity when so much of the messaging from the media and the government at the time was against that was a really big deal and really brave. 
Also, I introduced a new practice in my first reaction to Janet Jackson's music videos where I just take a peek at Wikipedia to see if there's anything that I missed or any context that I think will be necessary to share. And the only thing that is really standing out to me that I didn't touch on in this video is the fact that the background dancers are also mimicking the lyrics. And so in sort of an abstract way, these background dancers are embodying Madonna, again, this platonic ideal of the American dream. All right, up next is Drowned World or Substitute for Love. Oh, this feels very reminiscent of Princess Diana. That was eerie. That is a nightmare. That was a great music video. Very dramatic. I loved all the action. There were a lot of really cool details going on here. So sort of scrolling through the video, right away I see on this TV what looks like a nature documentary of, I think, wolves. It's a little bit blurry. Tearing apart this flesh and fighting over it. Wolves or other predators are a pretty universal image of the type of people who use other people. So Madonna in this video feels used by the paparazzi and by these other celebrities. There's always something that people want from her as if they are carnivores hunting her. In retrospect, it might be hyenas, but still, same principle. And a decision that I think is so cool to have this almost first person perspective as Madonna leaves her home and we immediately see her bodyguards and all of these cameras flashing and it's very overwhelming and it immediately puts us into this perspective of panic and I think it just works so well. And we have these alternating moments throughout the video of chaos and calm because first we have the chaos of the paparazzi outside her home and I guess she is drowning in all of this attention and press and then she gets in the car and it's calm again. And there were some brief moments of shaky cam almost in a guerrilla filmmaking sort of style. And to me that felt very reminiscent of the news media and specifically of the death of Princess Diana, who would have died just a couple years before this song and album were released. We know that Princess Diana died in a situation where she was being chased by paparazzi, so we culturally at this time would have understood the consequences of the way that Madonna is being basically stalked in this video. And so Madonna finally gets to this hotel where she's going and runs into all of these fans in the lobby, reaching out to her, taking photos of her, and all of their faces are distorted and it is so creepy. It's like this alienation. There is something about this celebrity culture that takes away people's humanity because these faces aren't human. They're not recognizable and relatable. Their eyes are black and hollow and lifeless and it is just so eerie and again, very alienating because Madonna doesn't feel this human connection. She feels alone even though she is surrounded by this horde of obsessive people there specifically to see her. And so of course she runs off into this service hallway in the hotel and walks by I think this busboy sort of character and there's this sort of moment where she's like, 
does he recognize me? And they have this prolonged eye contact. And as she's walking away, he sort of looks over his shoulder. And it's just every single small interaction is filled with this discomfort. And we get it more overtly in sort of a sadder way when she runs into this housekeeper and she thinks, oh, this is like a normal person. We made eye contact, we smiled. And then of course she pulls out a camera and takes a photo and Madonna's like, can't, can't catch a break. So then she runs off to the VIP lounge of the hotel and is surrounded by presumably all of these other high rollers and celebrities. And maybe they can relate to her and maybe they'll give her a moment of respite. But no, they all surround her. They all have the distorted faces. And when she runs off, she leaves her sunglasses. And of course, someone else picks them up and wears them. So not only are they acting out the sort of role of carnivore, you know, picking something off from her that we saw set up at the beginning of the video, but also it's worth noting that Madonna sits on a couch that is upholstered with this cheetah print. Cheetahs are not only a predator, but also hunted for clearly their fur. So the very fabric of the world around Madonna is defined by this carnivorous attitude. And it's initially kind of funny to me that someone steals her sunglasses because this is a high rollers lounge. Everyone in there is wearing these sunglasses, which I think are the symbol in this video of being someone who needs to hide, right? From the flashes, concealing their identity. They all understand this life intimately and they still don't treat her humanely. The only real escape, of course, is when she gets back home to her child and embraces her and finally is at peace. The lions waiting outside her door aren't the actual love that she needs. They are this fake love. She needs the real love of family. And there's this interesting, almost counterintuitive decision in the video with the lighting, where the moments that Madonna is in the dark are the moments that are most comfortable, I think. I don't know if it's a direct correlation, but at home, everything is dim, the lights are turned off, and that's where she feels safe. She is anonymous in the dark. So I'm looking at the Wikipedia page right now, and it would appear that the pretty clear similarities that could be drawn between the situation in the video and the circumstances surrounding Princess Diana's death actually caused some controversy, which personally I find strange because Madonna, again, is one of the biggest stars in the world. So of course, she, like Diana, would be actively put in danger by the recklessness and the obsessiveness of the paparazzi. It looks like Madonna's publicist claimed that there weren't any intentional similarities. Um, even in that case, we culturally understand those similarities. We should be able to understand that the situation that Madonna is in is parallel to the one that Diana was in, regardless of whether she specifically was referring to that situation. I feel like the anger that some people seem to have based on the Wikipedia article at Madonna for potentially suggesting that her situation is comparable to Diana's is really misplaced because that probably is an accurate portrayal of what she goes through. And the fact that we can draw those similarities should be very concerning and should cause us to reflect on our celebrity culture. In any case, I thought the video was excellent. I love the direction of it. The distortion and all the little creepy elements were just so nerve wracking and really put me in Madonna's mindset. And I thought that it just worked so well. Okay, the third and final music video I'm going to check out is Hung Up. Always super limber. Ooh. <laughs> Parkour. This is so fun. Bye. 
That was so much fun. Oh my gosh, I love that video. All three of these videos have been just so great. I think the most obvious point of comparison here is, weirdly enough, the Vogue music video, because there's such a stark contrast between the elegance and glamour of the Vogue music video and the almost mundane sort of everyday feeling of this music video, but I think they ultimately have a very similar point. Because the video starts out with all of these different sort of groups or, you know, individuals being separated and dancing on their own. Madonna, of course, in her pink leotard, dancing on her own and enjoying herself in her little dance studio. Um, she is always very impressively limber, which um, I envy because I am stiff as a board. Um, it's like I have rigor mortis. If I tried to do any of this stuff, I would just snap in half. And so we have all these different people from different backgrounds and neighborhoods specifically separated out into different contexts. And something significant, I think, is that a lot of these dance routines are specifically dance battles. So of course we have the joy of dance going on, but also we have these divisions and these inherent conflicts. Just as a side note, I think my favorite scene in the music video is in the restaurant. It just looks like so much fun. The choreography is so great. Oh man, I just, it's so, so good. We have this middle stretch of the video where Madonna is walking down the city street on her own and just sort of lip syncing to herself. And I guess it's the build up to the party at the end. And then it's intercut with this scene on the train where another dance battle occurs. And of course, it's this increasing tension that builds up finally to this party. And what I think is significant about the party is that all of these differences are erased. There are no more conflicts, there are no more battles, there are no more divisions on race lines or class lines. It's just all of these people enjoying dance together. And of course, killing it at Dance Dance Revolution, because obviously. So sort of in a similar vein to the way that the Vogue music video said that music and dance can uplift people, this music video says that music can help people transcend their differences and come together and celebrate their unity. Looking at the Wikipedia page, something that I would would not have picked up on is that this video is inspired by John Travolta. We knew that it was a tribute sort of to dance in general, but specifically his prominence during the disco era makes a lot of sense. But disco, much like house and voguing, is a style that originated in marginalized communities and then sort of became a unifying monocultural moment. So having watched all three of these videos now, I actually like how I ended up sandwiching a darker video between these two very celebratory videos. I honestly loved all three and I don't think I can choose a favorite. Obviously, Vogue was extremely influential, but Drowned World had all of that symbolism and was more disturbing and dark, which I really enjoy. And then Hung Up was so much fun. I really can't pick a favorite. That was a blast. So thank you to all of you who recommended that I watch these videos. As always, let me know in the comments down below what music I should react to and what other topics you'd like to see me cover on my channel. Check the description for that donation link. Please subscribe to be here when I post new videos every week. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you are staying safe and healthy and until next time, that's it.